Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name's Scott and I own Golden Era Age Guitars. I am usually talking about parts casters, necks and bodies, but in this one we're talking about this guy, the Epiphone 355 inspired by Gibson. Now we're gonna hop over to the bench cam in a second. I know that my videos are usually seen by people who want to look at uh, aged parts caster stuff. So I know that based on the title of this video, I'm gonna get some new viewers and that's absolutely fine. Just to let you know, there are no sound bites in this demo. I am not a guitar player that's good enough to go out on YouTube and say, check this out for tones. There's plenty of other videos out there with that type of information. But for now, we're going to hop over to the bench cam and take a look at this. Okay, here we are back at the bench on the bench cam. And this is a slightly different look for us. Um, as I said in the intro, I know I'm going to get... Uh, I'm going to get more or different views, should I say, uh, viewers watching this uh, because of the nature of what we're we're talking about uh, being a being an Epiphone and, and not a golden era body and or neck. So the reason I'm doing this is, I mean, I've, I've had this for four days now. Um, today is the 10th of April 2024. This arrived on Monday, which was the 6th. And it came from Peach Guitars in Colchester. And the reason I'm doing this is just to kind of throw out uh, my opinion, uh, just to document uh, stuff that goes on here rather than this is a bona fide uh, review. This is going to have uh, sound clips and stuff going on. There's no, there's no demos in this. This is just us kind of looking at this guitar talking about it, what I like and all that kind of stuff. I haven't had much chance to play it, but I've managed to kind of play it um, against my Riviera No Gallagher signature model. And man, they're really different guitars. They, they look, you know, if you put them on a wall and say, well, obviously these are both Epiphone semi hollows and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, but that's kind of where it finishes. So this guitar for me the reason i bought this is probably the same as why a lot of people bought this guitar this is the same shape and color and you know everything looks kind of at distance the same as the gibson es330 or sorry <laughs> ES-355. Uh, Noel Gallagher, Keith Richards, uh, Bernard Butler, Johnny Marr. Um, I know there's countless others who use this. I just, I'm sorry. I, that's, the, that's the main ones that I know. Uh, one of my music heroes is Noel Gallagher. And when I saw him with this guitar, it was kind of a moment of, wow, that is an absolutely stunning, stunning instrument. So, when you go when you go online and you look and you see you know, five six seven eight thousand pounds for a guitar i'm i'm sorry guys uh i have to admit i just i can't justify i can't justify spending that on a guitar for myself uh there's just that point in life where there's other other things going on and bigger priorities so when i saw this and i've been looking at uh, semi halls for a while the minute i saw this i think it took it took about two days to kind of, you know, process the the price, the information, kind of go back and forth and see, was it doable? And when I actually went through to buy it, I thought, man, I hope there's one left, you know? And when I was clicking through the internet, pages that I'd seen, uh, you know, a couple of days before where there was stock, all of a sudden the page was gone, it was dead. Nothing found to the site and sold out. So the panic kind of set in. So, um, I went straight uh, around the usual uh, retailers after I'd been on uh, Peach just to see what see what was going on, see what stock levels were like across the board because uh, I wanted to use Peach. Peach is my, my go-to for, for my guitars, my new, my new guitars, should I say. And um, so I'd kind of done, you know, gone around some of the other retailers and the 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 entire range had started to disappear and sell out so obviously i i got a bit panicky but i went back to peach and i grabbed one of theirs and 
it arrived safe and sound on the what day yeah arrived I arrived on Monday it was ordered it was ordered before the weekend we're in Northern Ireland so things take an extra day sometimes to to get through so upon opening this it, it, it's just I never thought I would see the split diamond headstock the open the open book um silhouette the gold hard I, I just didn't think I'd ever see it I didn't think it would happen does this matter to me the name on the headstock absolutely not uh absolutely not I I guess part of me wants to say, which I guess I am going to say, I read a few comments online. Well, it's more than a few. But the people who love this guitar really love it. Or this range. They love the range. Uh, then there are people who aren't really so keen. And they're throwing up, you know, it's it says Epiphone here. It says crafted or made in China on the back as a sticker. I mean, obviously I'll take the sticker off because I don't want to leave residue on the guitar uh, and it was 1199 uh, 1199 pounds plus the delivery uh that's been that 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 combination has been a sticking point for a lot of people now it's not a sticking point for people who have bought it and who want to own one which includes myself so in my head this saves several thousands of the full fat one which is obviously the gibson model but when you run through the specs and you think well hang on a second this thing's absolutely this is stacked this is absolutely stacked uh they have the, okay it's an epiphone it's made in china in your head you're thinking well how good can it be this thing is absolutely incredible it has been finished impeccably now one thing I didn't find out till later on, and I've kind of deliberately left, you can see this patch here, it looks like a big hazy patch. I've left this on with a bit of light coming in from the window. So you can see that this is actually a satin finish. It's definitely, it's not matte, but it's not, it, it, it's probably closer to being on the matte side of satin than the gloss side of satin. So it's definitely got that matte stroke satin thing going on. But I really like that. I'll tell you the reason why again. It's a lot easier to shine up a matte finish than it is to dull a shiny finish properly. Now, for any of you guys who are watching this video and you've never seen another video that I've done before or me waffling and talking nonsense for about 20 minutes or half an hour, I finish guitars, uh, parts caster bodies, all parts necks. I finish all these things professionally. And... I do a lot of matte and satin finishes. I love that. I love that kind of worn look. I think there's a place for gloss. There's a place for for these satin finishes, and I don't find anything wrong with this at all. In fact, it's made things a bit easier for me. I'm going to do a test patch, not in the video, but I'm going to do a test patch just to see. Um, I'll just be using some sort of buffing compact. I'll probably put it on, um, I might even put it on Instagram just as a, you know, I've, I've done this as an experiment. But yeah, it's, it's a lot easier. I mean, if you, you, you get a lot of satin and matte finishes in, in furniture and kit kitchens, especially at the minute. Nobody wants the gloss effect, really. And you can always see when people have started putting their, their fingerprints on things, start like touching things, and especially where the handles are on a, on a cabinet where they've obviously twisted and opened the door. You can see that there's grease and oils and what <laughs> all, all that kind of stuff on the cabinet. You can see fingerprints, um, even as I do that. You can, you can see the initial outline and it fades of a, of a fingerprint. But this finish is super smooth. There's no, there's no nibs on it, uh, as as far as I can see, and I've been all over the guitar. There's no, there's no nibs on it, and the prep to get to this stage is always the same as if you're doing a gloss. In fact, the only difference at the end is when you do the gloss, is you usually flatten it one more time with the sander, uh, and some pads. Usually starting, well, it depends how good your prep has been, but you can get away with you know pads starting at you know a thousand and working your way up to three or four or five thousand, and then you buff it out. 
and obviously the smaller the the, the scratches from your sanding the easier the, the buffing process is going to be so the fact that you can see that this is a, a satin finish is good because technically you could still buff that up if you want now i'm not suggesting that you do and i'm i god knows i'm not going to do it with this one but i'll do a test patch in a little inconspicuous place just to see what it's like uh i haven't even got as far as taking the the plastic off the uh the plastic off the um pickup covers yet so going back to the guitar my opinion about this guitar i was worried about the neck um i have i have quite short f fingers um they're not not tiny but certainly not long by any stretch and you kind of worry about you know getting the hand around the neck this has been I, I i mean out of the box i mean obviously it's had a it's had a setup by uh, the guys at peach but out of the box this thing is absolutely superb it's absolutely superb it's got a nice um they call it uh, a rounded what was it a rounded c i think they called it i think it's i think it's a rounded c me um got the spec here 50s rounded medium c profile now what i can tell you is that now i'm working in i suppose terminology that i am familiar with when i put my hand around that i, I use a lot of all parts fat necks now they're from here to under here uh on on an all parts fat neck you're getting the neck thickness is an inch here and it's an inch here. So it's a straight one inch shaft. And I actually, being totally honest, I do struggle a little bit to get my hand around that neck. But on this one, I can get my hand around it and it's extremely comfortable. So without throwing numbers into the equation because my head doesn't really uh, cope with numbers very well a lot of the time. If you want to put it in basic guitar player's terms, this would probably sit between what I deal with in all parts would be their SMO, SRO, TMO or TRO C neck. So it's between one of the, say, oh, we'll just pick the Telecaster neck. So the te Telecaster Rosewood neck from all parts is TRO C. And this would sit between a TRO C and a fat. So it's not as thin as the C and it's not as fat as fat so it's just it's somewhere in between that's what I gather when I pick this up so if you've got the opportunity to pick up one of the all parts fat necks and then I guess what you would just call us you could got all parts TROC would be a would be a standard Telecaster Rosewood replacement neck so if you pick up one of those necks you're going to feel it similar to a modern what Fender would call a modern uh, C profile so this uh, medium 50s round C that they've described on the spec is in between those two. And I think that's why I find it so comfortable. Sometimes I find, I mean, as, as I say, the fat's too fat, whereas the the all the TRO, the SMO, SRO, C stuff, it sometimes feels a little bit on the, on the, not thin and flat, but it's definitely got a more modern feel to it. Uh, I really like this neck. I've been able to play stuff on it. Uh, blues. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a blues classic rock, Brit rock sort of guy. Uh, I'd love to learn different, some different types of music, different types of guitar playing. But for what I'm playing, so if you just say classic rock in general, if that kind of opens, um, opens up the conversation a bit more, then ideally... And as, as I speak to you as a, as a rhythm guitar player, I, I, I'm more into chords than I am lead. If I speak to you in those terms, then this is possibly the most comfortable neck I have ever used for that type of music. So I am super happy that, um, that I was able to get my hand around it. Uh, bend notes, um, no fretting out, just really comfortable, really nice feel up and down the neck. The satin isn't just on the body, it's on the neck as well. It's also on the headstock. So, uh, well, leading up to the headstock then, uh, Grover tuners as well, which is a lovely addition. Again, it's all kind of comes back to, you know, people moaning about the, you know, made in China, it's an Epiphone, and it's over a thousand pounds or dollars or whatever currency you're working in. Uh, it, 
you know, these are these are good parts. You know, these are these are parts that you don't generally find on guitars of these specs. And the world is changing as well. It's kind of we're kind of past the point of talking now about that you know China you know Chinese factories cannot make guitars worthy of this price tag. Yes they can and here it is. So that's kind of that that, that would be my overall summary of this. Uh but the Grover automatic tuners are again they're absolutely superb. It's great it's great to see them. Uh I think Oh, I could be wrong, but I think I'm just looking at it from here. I think my Epiphone Riviera has Epiphone branded tuners on it. I've got no idea. They they could be they they could be made in the same factory as some other big brand. I don't know, but they don't have Grovers on them. And that guitar was eight seventy eight hundred and seventy. So again, this is not for people who want to justify. Well, why is it this price? I don't care, you know, really what anybody else has to say about the whole this is an expensive guitar for a Chinese Epiphone. It's it's not. It really it really isn't. Uh the open book headstock, love it. Um with the split diamond mother of pearl. That was years ago I remember seeing a Gibson custom hanging in a shop and it was second hand and it was my it was the first one I'd seen, but I think it was this is going back over just over twenty years. I remember playing it and I, I just saw the headstock and I absolutely I it was amazing even second hand it was well over two thousand pounds but it was a weird custom Les Paul it was I think it was like a blue it was like a blue in the middle and went out to like navy on the burst part or black so it was definitely a very custom I would imagine a very custom order but um I remember just seeing that headstock and thinking man that's killer and the more you see it the it's teasing you so i've had i've had over 20 years of this thing kind of teasing me a little bit so we've got all the detail all the details up here i'm delighted with uh it says i phone great because i can't afford to get uh, to say gibson that's as simple as as that gets so now you're coming down on to an an ebony fingerboard which you know does it does it matter? Well, it's a nice touch. It really is a nice touch. Um, my Epiphone Riviera, which I did another video on, which isn't really in the same vein as this video. It was more of a, uh, it was a lot shorter on that video, and it was just nice photographs. Uh, going through like a slideshow thing, me talking about the guitar, but I did get that fingerboard quite dark using my techniques that I like to keep to myself. And you guys have you might have seen these on my neck videos as well. And um, I remember getting that really dark, and I got loads of comments, and obviously the same, uh, the same type of people moaning about the price of of this guitar in front of me were kind of complaining that I wasn't sharing my darkening techniques. And it kind of proved to me that yeah, okay, you can get Indian laurel on that Riviera nearly as dark as as this, which is uh, which is um, which is ebony. It's a nice touch though, and there is a difference between that and the guitar that's leaning against the wall uh, over there, which is again the Indian laurel board on the Riviera. But it was nice to not have to do anything to this to darken it because it's, it's ebony, so it's all good. Um, the body stuff is kind of where I get a little bit lost because I'm, I'm certainly no expert, um, so I am going to check it out here, uh, read off the, the website. But yes, it's got the multi-layer binding um, on the front, seven ply on the front. And it's got the three ply on the back, I think that says. Yep. Um, it's got maple center block. Sorry, I'm reading off the website, so anybody could uh, anybody could do this. Uh, five, ply, ooh, five ply layered maple poplar. Now, I can't talk to you about the specific I'm not a guitar builder I'm not luthier and I don't pretend you know I'm not going to pretend to you guys I'm an expert on guitars especially ones that are made like this what I can tell you is that acoustically compared to the Riviera this sounds a bit brighter this has got more resonance it's got a bit more sustain it's got a bit more twang there's definitely more the dynamic range of this is is a lot wider now, 
I'm sure if we pulled up the specs and said, well, here's the Noel Gallagher Riviera, and then here's the uh, this this guitar, the the 355, you might somebody might come along and say, well, obviously there's a difference. Look at the spec. You know, this is this and this is this. Uh, there's a vast difference though to me in the room between those two guitars. Now I know that translates to the amps because I've played, I've played them, but this has got something else going on that the Riviera doesn't. So anybody who's kind of on on the fence about, you know, which price point to go for, my experience with this guitar is it's absolutely worth the effort. It's worth the extra, it's worth the effort, go and do it because it's a lovely, lovely guitar. Now, the other thing that's been a bit of a talking point that I've seen comments, again, it's just comments across social media. It's just, you know, if you scan down things and you you want to read, you know, um, you're always hoping to find what I would call real world experience opinion about something. Somebody who's actually gone and bought this, somebody who's gone and bought it and returned it because of whatever reason, somebody who's bought this and now it's their main guitar. You want to, you want to see these opinions based on experience you don't want to see i mean the internet's full of opinions based on absolutely nothing so i wanted to hear people talk about the pickups and as usual big debates going on about the cost of them and does it add to the guitar and um, in one place or this price another place or that price these pickups are absolutely fantastic i've got no idea what the spec is on them because i'm not a pickup maker and i'm not going to start talking to you about magnets and how many times the wire has been wound. I'm not here to do that. Uh, all I can tell you is that, in my opinion, I've been playing guitar for uh, 27 years now. I've owned a lot of stuff. I've owned a lot of gear. And out of the box, between the pickups in this guitar and the materials used for the body and neck, I mean, again, it's a one-piece neck. There's no scarf joint. It's a one-piece neck. Um, this thing rings like a bell. So I would urge anybody who can get to try one, go and try one. Absolutely worth the money. And then some. If it, In fact, had it been another couple of hundred pounds more, I wouldn't have probably, well, maybe would have hesitated for another day or so. But... You have to remember the next model up to this is the Gibson model to get all of these aesthetics. And yeah, you're you're into several thousand pounds. So there are a few hundred pounds on here and I would have probably still bought it. I think the biggest issue for a lot of people is that the Les Pauls in the range are starting to kind of nudge towards the lower end of the Gibson Les Paul standard range. And... I, th I think I saw a few comments about secondhand stuff where Gibson already do like the entry level stuff, which looks like they've kind of oiled the finish and, you know, there's no binding and stuff. They say, yeah, you can get one of these. Yeah, but <laughs> why would you why would you turn your back on this to go and buy a, a, like an entry level Gibson just for the sake of it saying Gibson? This is where the whole the stigma part of it co starts to come in and my first guitar, my first serious guitar in 2000 and I want to say 2002 was an Epiphone Sheraton in tobacco sunburst and had the beautiful uh, f that floral inlay. Um, it was, I remember it had really high action. It had like 16 strings on it. It was, it was crazy. It was probably like 12, 12 or 13 gauge strings on it. But um yeah, it was a it was a killer guitar. It was tobacco sunburst. So I've always had this kind of soft spot for the the Epiphone hollow or semi hollow body stuff, but I have got no complaints about this guitar whatsoever. Uh, I'm sorry this hasn't been a particular maybe an interesting um, look at this. I I will probably after this I'll probably splice in some um, some close ups. Uh, just so you can see what's going on a bit more uh, closely. The one thing I kind of did I don't like and this is a personal preference thing is i've actually gone and bought uh some of these uh these were 14.99 plus postage uh gear for music i'd have to I, to be honest i can't even remember what the shot was i think it was gear for music uh 
so these were like £17.50 with postage. I just think they're going to look a whole lot better on there than those. Cosmetic doesn't add anything. To, well, maybe <laughs> maybe somebody would argue that these sound better than those. I, I don't know. Um, shout out to air straps as well. I found my old air strap, which had been in a drawer because I haven't really been playing guitar. I haven't had a guitar for a long time apart from that Riviera and I haven't been playing it because I'm just too busy. So I thought I would get that back on the go. And I saw, I think Johnny Marr has one kind of like that now too with on his, on his 355. So um, overall guys, I'm not here to sell you anything. Uh, I just think that, you know, and I, I'm, I do, I do apologize. There's no sound demos. I'm not a guitar player in that sense. I, I can't just, you know, whip up, whip up a, a signed demo or a, or a video with uh, fantastic playing that's going to do this justice. But straight out of the box, or the case, should I say, because it comes with a nice case. This is a killer guitar. And at the moment, I'm struggling to actually see, does it need anything else? Do I want to change anything? No, out of the box, this guitar does everything that I wanted it to do and more. Uh, the only thing that I knew I wanted to do was change them, which is why I, I bought those knobs in the first place. There's one more modification I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that for another day. But yeah, uh, maybe a, a, a bit of a tedious and boring look at this. Uh, I'm much more uh, happy and experienced talking about stuff that I... I create and I do and I and I sell and I finish rather than doing a product review of uh, this guitar on the bench. But I'll close out the video just with um, with a few closer up shots. Uh, you can feel free to you know feel free to comment. Uh, don't need to tell me how crap the video was because I know it was crap. Sorry again. Uh, but yeah, we'll catch you on the next on the next video and hopefully I'll have some more golden era offerings for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Okay, I lied, that wasn't the end of the video. I put the new knobs on, so let's go and take a look at that. And I promise you this time, that's the video over and I'll catch you in the next one.